Have you ever tried to brighten a photo, but it just didn't look quite right? Well, today I'm going to show you a way you can naturally and realistically brighten your photos. And best of all, it's super easy to do. After this video, you'll never brighten your photos the same way again. Let's get started. If you'd like to follow along with me, I've included a download link to this photo in the video description. To brighten this photo, the strategy that we're going to use is to brighten up the darkest parts of our photo. To do this, we need to select the darkest parts of our photo. This can be hard to do, so instead, we're first going to select the brightest parts of our photo, and then I'll show you what we'll do. <laughs> to select the brightest parts of this photo, We'll go down to our Channels panel, and then we'll right-click on Composite Red, and then press Load to Pixel Selection. Composite Red lets us select the brightest parts of our photo. Now that we have those selected, we can invert this selection, and then we'll have the darkest parts of our photo selected. I'll press Command or Control Shift I, and that will invert our selection so now we have the darkest part selected. With these selected, we can put them on their own layer so we can begin to brighten them. To do this, I'll press Command or Control J. And now that we have that selected, I'll press Command or Control D to deselect. The first step that we'll do in brightening these darkest parts is we'll change the blend mode. I'm going to come up to our blend modes and change it to screen. Screen brightens up our picture beautifully, but you might notice a few problems that we're having. Sometimes, when you're brightening up your photos, your shadows can begin to look a little bit hazy. Because of this, we're losing a lot of the shadow detailing in her dress and in this part of the photo. To fix this, I'll come over to our blend ranges. Inside of this dialog box, I can bring down this handle right here, and as we bring it down, we'll begin to see more of the shadows appear. I'm going to bring it down about three quarters of the way so that we can see some of our shadows, but it's still being brightened. I'll close out of this dialog box now, and we can see our before and after. That's looking pretty good. Another thing that you might notice is when we brighten our shadows, sometimes the colors can look a little bit dull. That's because dark parts of our photo generally don't have a lot of color to them, so now I want to increase the saturation of those parts of our photo. To do that, I'll come down to our Adjustment Studio, and then apply an HSL adjustment. I'm going to make this HSL adjustment a child layer to our shadows. That way, it's only affecting the dark parts of our photo. Then, with it as a child layer, I can begin to increase the saturation to see what a difference it can make in our colors. I'll close out of this dialog box and show you before and after. I think this is a great way to brighten up the photo even more by brightening up the colors a little bit. The last thing that we can do for this image to make it even brighter is I can select this layer and then I can duplicate it by pressing Command or Control J. With this duplicated, we now have twice the brightening happening, so if this looks a little bit much, we can always bring down the opacity. Now I'm going to select both of these layers and check them off so you can see the before and here's our after with our beautifully brightened image. This brightening technique works well enough on its own, but it can become even more powerful if you combine it with layer masks. You can check out this video over here to learn powerful techniques on masking like a pro. Thanks for watching my friends, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.